Preach, Congressman. That is supposed to be the promise of America. True democracy means everyone has equal rights and an equal vote, uh, voice and vote. Until the right to vote doesn't depend on where you live or the color of your skin, we won't be living in a true democracy. And that is exactly why all Americans need to care about this, all Americans. The right to vote is right there in the Constitution. The 15th Amendment extends the right to vote to any male regardless of race. The 19th Amendment extends that right to women. The 24th Amendment abolishes poll taxes intended to keep black people from voting. Those amendments didn't just appear out of thin air. They were fought for with people's lives, with protests, and with acts of civil disobedience. If voting rights seem straightforward, it's because it is straightforward. But Republicans are making it complicated because they see suppressing the vote as the only way to stay in power. The only way to stop that is with direct action. And that means pulling out all the stops. At the federal level, it means President Biden changing his tune on the filibuster. It's no secret that the antiquated Senate rule is standing in the way of passing the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the For the People Act, two pieces of federal legislation that would supersede most oppressive state voting laws. But it's going to take action, not just talk. From Biden, from lawmakers, from me, from you, from all Americans to keep the country moving in the right direction on this. It's on us to make sure that America lives up to its promise outlined in the Constitution. With me now is the Reverend Dr. William Barber. He is the co-chairman of the Poor People's Campaign. He's the president and the senior lecturer for Repairers of the Breach. And he, too, was arrested just a few weeks ago during a Capitol Hill protest over voting rights and over abolishing the filibuster. So to you, this is old news, Reverend. You understand that there is a way to bring attention to this, the most serious of issues. But now this has to go further than people like you who have long been willing to get arrested for the cause. This now has to go to every one of us in this country, because while these rights do not extend to all of us, they are not enjoyed by any of us. Alan, you're exactly right. This is the time. That's why not only was I arrested, I was arrested with people from West Virginia and Ohio and Kentucky who put, put putting pressure on McConnell and Manchin. Last week, over 100 women of all different races, creeds, and colors from 42 states uh, stood up and were arrested this coming Monday. We're going to be in 40 states in the Senate offices, Democrats and Republican, asking them, are you willing to end the filibuster? Are you willing to pass the real John Lewis bill, which is the For the People Act, the one he wrote? Are you willing to pass the Voting Rights Act? Are you willing to pass 15 and a union and do it all by August the 6th, which is the 56th anniversary of the signing of the Voting Rights Act? If they say yes, that we'll tell the media that we say no, people are going to engage in direct action. And then on Tuesday, we launch, Wednesday, we launch a march from Georgetown, Texas to Austin, Texas. And then on Saturday, a massive rally in Texas to nationalize what's going on and demand federal action. A Selma like march that says we can't do this state by state and litigation by litigation. I've been through that. It takes too long. We need these federal protections. And then on the following Monday, we're coming back to D.C. with clergy and workers, clergy and low-wage workers, a mass of them, to, in fact, engage in direct action. And everybody needs to get in where they can get in. We don't have to be under the same banner, but we need to be in the same battle. You know, the, you, you, you make this connection for wages, for poor people, and for democracy. I was talking to Dolores Huerta the other day, who was registering voters in 1955, agricultural wo voters, because she understood that if these voters do not have their, their, their franchise, they do not have their, their right, it affects all decisions about them, including people keeping people in poverty. Exactly right. That's why we don't need to make the choice between physical infrastructure and protecting the infrastructure of our democracy. You know, we don't need to say we're going to build bridges but not stop people from abridging the right to vote. Dr. King said in 65 that the great fear of the Southern aristocracy was for black and white, poor and low wealth people to come together and vote in a way that could change the economic architecture of the country. We cannot see this just as a race issue. It is a race issue, and it is targeted at black people, but it's not. When you oh, that's that. When you look at these bills, when you look at Texas, look at West Virginia, look at these bills that have been passed, 
It will hurt white people. It will hurt poor people. It will hurt black people. It will hurt Latino people, disabled people, Asian people, Native people, uh, workers. Uh, it will take away uh, things that 56 million Americans used in the past election. They're trying to take away early voting, take away same-day registration, take away mail-in, take away drop box. 56 million people used those methods in the last election in the franchise of voting. So we must see this for what it is. January 6th was a violent insurrection. What we're seeing in these state houses is a political insurrection, an attempt to do a political coup d'etat of our system of voting. And we can't sit back. We can't just see this as a race issue. We all have to get in now. And we have to say to the president and to the Senate, you must act now. And those Democrats, that there's no moderate position on this. Those Democrats that want to not pass the For the People's Act or, or, or want to weaken it or compromise it now or want to say, wait, it's been 56 years since the passing of the Voting Rights Act in 1965, and we have less voting rights today under the Voting Rights Act than we did 56 years ago. And if you are blocking something now, you are an accessory to the political insurrection that's going on. You are an accessory to what is happening in these state houses. This is old. It's not just even the Trump lie. This is a lie about fraud and voting that has gone on, particularly in the South, ever since the Southern strategy of Strom Thurmond, Jesse Hams, and Richard Nixon. But it, it, is on, it is on steroids now. It's not Jim Crow. It's James Crow Esquire. They want to shut down any and everybody. So if you're gay, if you're, if you're black, if you're a worker, if you're Latino, if you're Asian, if you're Native American, uh, if, if you're white, whoever you are, if you care about this country in this moment, not just the protection of a party, Democrat or Republican, but the protection of the very country and maybe in some ways the world, you need to be engaged now and demand in the filibuster, pass the For the People's Act, all provisions of it, pass the Voting Rights Act restoration, pass 15 and a un $15 minimum wage, and, and, and also protect our immigrants and DACA. We could do this tomorrow. We could do this on Monday or Tuesday. It does. We don't have to keep waiting on this, and we shouldn't wait, and we must demand. What do you need the people watching you right now to do? People like me who have never had a problem voting, people like me who can get these problems sorted out, people like me who do not think it's targeted me. What do we all have to do right now to join this fight? If you can't get to D.C., you need to be flooding the Senate offices with calls demanding that they act on the things I just named in that filibuster now. Uh, 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 and, and, and don't accept the lie of the filibuster that it has brought people together. That's, a, that's not the truth. The filibuster has been used not just to hurt black people, but women's rights and labor rights. And I could go on. Call for the full passage of the bill John Lewis wrote, the For the People Act. Don't let people say, well, we'll give you the Voting Rights Act without the For the People Act. You have to have both, because if you're not for the For the People Act, then that means you're against same-day registration, against early voting, against drop box, because that, against felony reenfranchisement, and against strengthening the attorney general's hand, because that's what's in it. To call for the passage of the Voting Rights Act restoration. Call for people to uh, uh, do 15, and then join one of these movements. Join us on Monday, August the 2nd. Uh, join us in Texas on, for the mass rally in Austin. COVID safe, come bring your mask, uh, uh, come there. But join us because this is the moment you must be willing to put your body on the line and put your, as we used to say, your, your butt where your mouth is. This is where we got to stand up and stand out and speak up and speak out. Reverend, good to see you as always. Thanks for the work you're doing. Reverend Dr. William Barber is the co-chairman of the Poor People's Campaign. He's the president and senior lecturer for Repairers of the Breach. And he wears the badge of many uh, in the civil disobedience movement right now of having been recently arrested in his efforts to advance voting.